what's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today I'll be talking about a brand new film coming out at Uncorked Entertainment on September 14th. I got to see it a little bit early, and this is Royal Jelly. Royal Jelly ultimately follows around a lonely girl who is absolutely obsessed with bees, queen bees in particular, that are fed royal jelly, which helps them distinguish their power over the other bees in the colony. When her family's cruelty becomes overbearing, she leaves her home and decides to stay with a really cool substitute teacher who also seems very interested in bees. But the horror was only just beginning. So there was actually a few things that attracted me to see this film. First and foremost was this ridiculous poster which kind of gave me the vibe that it was potentially going to be a self-aware type of B horror film. No pun intended. The other thing that it reminded me of was an episode of Smallville, which I love, called Drone, which was also about a lonely girl obsessed with bees, and her obsession kind of transforms into its own supernatural ability of sorts. The same can kind of be said about this movie, but I can't really divulge what happens in this movie, but it was certainly weird. <laughs> Unfortunately, my interest in this film mostly remained at that level before I saw it. After I popped it on, I was with it until essentially the inciting incident where this girl leaves her family. Everything after that is weird, confusing, a bit boring, and I honestly think it missed the mark in whatever message it was trying to get across because that focus on bees kind of went away, and a new focus on a new thing kind of replaced it. And you don't even know what that thing is until maybe the end of the movie. And even by then, you're still not entirely sure what it was. And again, even though I wasn't the hugest fan of this movie, I'm still not going to spoil you because, hey, I mean, you could love it. But for me, I think the biggest problem came down to the narrative as I asked myself the question, you know, what is the point here? What is the problem that needs to be solved? Who's going about solving it? And why? And while there is kind of an answer to that question, it's incredibly vague. Maybe there's not enough exposition, maybe the writer didn't even know themselves, but I'll just say that the direction that they took wasn't what I was expecting, nor was it really something that I cared for. Past the writing, I also mentioned that the film as a whole is definitely on the indie side, and cheap indie at that, I've said it before in my reviews, but you know, I've been there. My brothers and I have made our own movies and submitted them to film festivals at practically no budget. I understand the constraints and limitations, and at that point, what you end up grasping and depending on is essentially premise and premise alone. And the premise for Royal Jelly was just not strong enough in my opinion, so what you're left with when you don't have a strong premise is the overbearing distraction of those financial limitations. You're going to notice poor acting, you're going to notice those problems in the narrative, and you're also going to notice the issues with the visuals. Now, maybe the screener sent to me was an unfinished variety, but the visuals in some scenes kind of shifted all over the place. It's like the contrast and black levels of certain scenes change. Like there was one scene where there was a girl in bed. One shot of her, it's like faded black levels. It goes to a shot of somebody else. It goes back to the girl in the bed. And suddenly it was like perfect black levels. And it would go back and forth. And when you don't have consistency with your visuals, it looks amateur. And a lot of other shots in the film in general, I would just say felt auto white balanced, which when you're watching a movie just makes the whole thing feel washed out and unprofessional. Maybe that's just me though. Let's go ahead and break down my final score from a technical unbiased perspective. I can say that a lot of the stuff going on here wasn't that great. It was a mixture between straight up bad practice behind the scenes and common practice. So nothing stood out to me as good specifically, meaning that it can only be worse than middle ground. And it is at 48%. My bias score or just how I felt about it overall is lower than that because like I said, most of my interest in this film came from looking at this poster and the knowledge of a similar but arguably better story seen in Smallville. After starting the movie, most of that interest flew the coop. This score is 28%, meaning that when we combine the two scores together, we come to the final rating of 38%, 38 out of 100 possible stars or an F letter grade. I always hate giving out an F Makes me feel like garbage, but honestly, it reflects my experience with the film. That, however, may not be true for you, so let me know in the comments down below if this film actually did work for you, and if it did, 
Let me know why. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out. Dave examines movies. We just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number.